Halleluja, Halleluja, Halleluja. We praise your name. Halleluja. Jesus. Hallelujah. It is to you I give the glory. It is to you I give the praise. For you have done so much for me. I will magnify your name. It is. It is to you, Holy Father. No one else but you. And I will.
song we're going to sing is a new song to Yahweh I believe and the word simply says all of my worship belongs to you and that I have searched the world and found there is no one like you God you are Jesus there is no other name Jesus the Lamb of God hallelujah heaven and earth proclaim your Jesus the Lamb of God hallelujah It belongs to you. All of my worship belongs to you. I have searched the world. I have searched the world and found there is no one. You are Jesus. You are Jesus.
Lamb of God, Jesus. Heaven and earth proclaim your Jesus, Lamb of God, God of creation. There we go. God of creation, all things are made through Jesus. Born of a virgin, born of a virgin, promise fulfilled in Jesus. Suffering servant, suffering servant, all the blood of Jesus. Resurrection and life, resurrection and life, death has died in Jesus. Word of the
no, no. Heaven and earth proclaim your Jesus, Lamb of God.
bless you. We pray, praise your holy name, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. my strength you are the strength 
strength of my life. Hallelujah. Jesus. And I lift my hands in total praise to you. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. John 11, 25, he's, the Lord said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. That you are the resurrection and the life. Let's just worship him. Hallelujah. Saints, we are going to continue our time of worship with tithes and offering. I know we've got our young people ready to give us um, a, a short demonstration in a minute. But before we do that, we want to talk about offering. And I know we've got a lot of new people here. So I don't want anyone to feel obliged that they must give. It is not like that at all. But we are giving to a God who has given so much to us and the currency of God's kingdom is faith all right he's not struggling but he's given us an opportunity to be part of what he's doing here on earth to partner with him and I want to read a quick scripture which is first Timothy 6 18 to 20 if you want to follow along And the title um, addresses this to the rich. So I'm going to receive that. And you can receive that if you like as well. <laughs> it says, as for the rich in this present world, instruct them not to be conceited and arrogant, nor to set their hope on the uncertainty of riches. Do not set your hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. He has provided it. He says, uh, this is Paul's letter to Timothy. He says, instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, willing to share with others. In this way, storing up for themselves the enduring riches of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. Saints, you have the opportunity to lay for yourself a good foundation for your life. God has so much for you, so much he wants to give you. And we have the opportunity to partner with him today. So if you would like to take that opportunity, we have a number of ways to do this. Um, we have card payment available. Thank you, Samantha. She's over there if you'd like to see her. Um, we also have a QR code. Uh, hopefully, it's going to pop up behind me and some bank details. Um, and it's also on the notice board. We also have, thank you, Stephanie's waving some envelopes. If you'd like one, if you raise your hand, she can get you an envelope if you want to go, um, go with the cash. Also, if you are a taxpayer, we can claim gift aid on your donation. And this is at no extra cost for us. And this will give us more money to do the work that we're doing here. So please um, fill in the forms that we've got out there. Or you can go onto the YCF website. Under the Giving tab, there's a declaration form. Um, any questions, you can contact the office. The finance team can help you out with that. Okay, so I'm going to give you... A little bit of time if you'd like to, to give right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And for those that are new here, when we're giving into YCF, we're giving into many ministries. I'm going to go into the announcements in a little while, but there is so much that happens here at YCF in the UK and also in many places around the world. So it is good ground which bears much fruit. So I'm just going to pray at this time. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you that you have provided us for everything that we need to get wealth. Even the very breath in our lungs is from you, Lord. And it is a pleasure and a privilege to give back into your kingdom, into good soil, and it may bear fruit a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to ask our lovely youth department to take over. Welcome them. Thank you. We need a mic. Yeah. Martha was the first person to see Jesus after he was resurrected. False. 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 Um, someone on Team B. I can't, I can't lie. It was from this, it's from this vicinity, so I'm just making sure that there's a point allocated to this team. False. Oh. Mary, Mary. So there's that double points then because we've got false and Mary. Yeah? Okay, double portion. Yeah? Right. Question two. How many pieces of silver did Judas betray Jesus for? Thirty. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Who said, he is not here, for he is risen, and he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. <laughs> Angels. Yeah, that is correct. An angel? angel from yeah. Matthew 28, verse 6. So the next one is finish the scripture. So finish the scripture. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me. I think, I think everybody gets that point. Well done. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's correct. Um, Reese. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the answer. That's the answer. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What's the next part? Oh. 
Okay. We cite the scripture, John 3, verse 16. Finish the scripture, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while. Yeah. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> 5 verses 8. Okay, now there is a bonus question. Recite the scripture. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumphant. So now we have some beautiful art pieces that the youth have done based on the lyrics of the worship song, What a Beautiful Name It Is. Um, I base my artwork on the lyrics that we were given to inspire us, and in each box I put a lyric of the song to represent it. I base my artwork on the singer called Hillsong Worship. I based my artwork on the times where Jesus was crucified and the veil was ripped. Imagine a world where Jesus didn't die for us and he didn't and he didn't die for us and what would the world be like? I'd feel hopeless because there'll be no kindness in the world. The world would be chaotic because there'd be a lot of violence and people would have no morals. I think the world would be puzzled or confused because no one would know how to cope in life. It would be strange because it's not God's original plan, no purpose. Amen. But Jesus did go to the cross for us and we have been saved and redeemed and we have everlasting life. I'd feel secure because the world would be more safe. God is my healer because he helps everybody around us. God guides me and teaches me right from wrong and he helps me understand life. He is my therapist and counsellor because he is someone to comfort me when people let me down. So to Jesus, we just want to say, thank you. (laughs) Keep clapping, keep clapping. So I just wanted to very quickly say a massive well done to our lovely young people. Yeah. They've been working really hard on it. And I just also want to publicly thank Naomi. This was all her. 
her ideas and she led the session so well done to you and I just also want to say as well that you know we love the fact that we can take the time to work with our young people for them to honor God but also highlight all the beautiful ways that you can praise God you know, it's not just about coming on the pulpit. You can have artwork, you can do spoken word, you can do poetry. So yeah, guys, I'm proud of you. I love you and well done. Amen, amen. We can do better than that, guys. Come on, let's stand, let's stand. Can we stand at this time and celebrate our youth? God is good. God is good. We are training up the next generation of worshippers, those that will worship God in spirit and in truth. So keep on encouraging our youth. Amen. And at this time, I just want to um, lead us in prayer. I said to the Lord this week, what should I lead in prayer? And it's funny. God said, thank you. He dropped in, the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. Thank you. There's so much to give God thanks for. Um, I was just writing a list of things. I mean, the list is endless. But I was just writing a few things to thank God for at this time as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Had it not been for him, I wouldn't be here today. A lot of us wouldn't be here today. So we just really want to thank God at this time. We want to thank God for providing the ultimate sacrifice and the confidence that we can have in him. We don't have to have any confidence in ourselves. We have confidence in him. We can thank God that although we see so many things happening around us and in the world today, we remain hopeful. Why? Because God is with us. We can thank God because he died for our sins. We no longer live in condemnation. Yeah? We no longer live as condemned. He said, we are not condemned. We are redeemed children of God. Amen. So this time, I just want us to thank God. Yeah, has anybody here got anything to thank God for? All right. So let's just thank God. Let's just thank God. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Prince of Peace. We thank you that you are Yahweh. You are more than enough. We thank you, Lord. You are the center of it all, the foundation upon which we build on. We thank you, Lord God, that we have not been forgotten. You have not forsaken us. You have not left us. We are here, Lord, because of you. We thank you, God, that Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice, that he came and died, but is risen again. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have this anchor in our soul, Father God, that we can cling to you, Father God. We thank you you father god that we are not in of the world oh god but we are of you christ jesus and we place our hope oh god in nothing else lord you are our foundation we thank you lord that we can remain hopeful even when the world looks hopeless we can remain hopeful we thank you oh god that we have the joy of the lord because you are our ever present help in our times of trouble we thank you oh god that you have never left us you never forsake us you will never leave us you will never abandon us we thank you oh God that we are the head and not the tail we are above and not beneath we are oh God thank you thank you Jesus we thank you oh God that if you are for us God you are more than the world against us we thank you oh God that the joy of the Lord is our strength we thank you father God that when we are weak in you we are made strong. We thank you, Lord God, that every need that we have, you will provide. We thank you, oh God, that you keep us as the apple of your eye. We thank you, Lord God, that no matter what we go through, we are assured that the victory through Christ Jesus, because we are overcomers. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We thank you, oh God, that the promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. We thank you, oh God, that Jesus went ahead of us and he's prepared a table before us. <laughs> in the presence of our enemies. He's the one that anoints our head with oil 
so that our cup runneth over. He promised goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We thank you for the apostles and the believers of old that by the sharing of the word we are recipients today of this good news of this good news of this good news of this good news and Father we thank you for those whose eyes will be open today through the message that will be shared in this house today. We thank you in advance for the lives and the eyes that will be opened for those that will turn from darkness to light. We thank you in advance for Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever. In Jesus name, amen. going to try as quickly as possible to go through our events and notices and um, there are quite a few first of all can I just ask if you do have a spare seat next to you we are quite full today um, so just make it clear so the ushers can know that um, there is a spare seat near you um, do we have any first-time visitors we'd like to just welcome you we're not going to ask you to come up but if you can raise your hand if you're a first-time visitor Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, welcome, you're very welcome, very welcome. And uh, if you have any envelopes from, from the offering, please just hold them up so the ushers can come and collect those as well. Okay, so online prayer, there is, uh, we usually have Monday morning, 6.30, and Friday morning, but there will not be any tomorrow um, because it's the bank holiday. We'll resume back on the 5th of April. There'll be no Kingdom Connect or Impact Bible School um, this week due to the half term. It will resume back on the 17th of April. Um, next Sunday is going to be Family Sunday. That is the 7th of April at 11 a.m., so please... Come and bring your family, give them an invite. I did see something recently that says the majority of people that come to church come because they're invited. So please do invite someone to church next week. Um, we have a church baptism. Very excited about this one. Yeah. Got some of my own children being baptized this year. Um, and that is the 14th of April. If you are interested in being baptized, or if you know anyone who is, please speak to uh, Evangelist Lisa. She was the one just up here praying. Or you can email the church office um, if you'd like to be baptized. The 21st of April is going to be Praise and Worship Sunday. So you can come and sing to your heart's content um, all day, most of the day. Um, we're going to have a new Freedom in Christ course that starts on the 21st of April as well. That will be after service. If you're interested, please speak to Minister Pauline. Um, I don't think she's here today, so maybe in the first instance, email the church uh, office and we'll get your details passed on to her. Um, we have our lovely youth going on retreat this summer. Woo! <laughs> That's going to be the 2nd to the 4th of August, and they're going to be going off to Ashford. So we are asking all adults, if you would like to sponsor one of our youth to go, if you'd like to help support, especially those with lots of kids, you know, it can be expensive to send them all off on retreat, but it is going to be an amazing time, and it's definitely something that they will remember from year, for years to come. So if you would like to support them, 
please speak to um, either Naomi, Kara, or Sophia about that. They will um, gladly receive any donations. Lastly, or nearly lastly, we're looking for volunteers. If you'd like to volunteer to support in the church in a practical way, we are looking for volunteers in hospitality and for cleaning. Okay, so if you are interested in helping out with hospitality, please speak to Pam and cleaning is, is Angela. If you don't know who those people are, then um, please do email the office or speak to any of the staff. They can point you in the right direction. Okay, lastly, volunteer of the month. We have a lovely, I'll say young lady. She looks very young. Um, who serves in worship, serves in ushering, is a faithful member that we value so much. So at this time, I would like to ask Rona Henry, if you'd like to come up to the stage. She's looking shocked. But yes, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. Please come. We want to thank you for your service. We want to thank you for being faithful in ministry, in doing what God has called you to do. Uh, on behalf of all of YCF, we truly appreciate it. We thank you. Amen. All right. Okay. And the time we've all been waiting for, we want to hear from the Lord, right? Amen. So without further ado, can I introduce Bishop Noel McLean to come and share the word of God. Welcome him as he comes. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Um, I know you guys are prompting me, aren't you? <laughs> I trust in God. My Savior, the one. Come on, stand. He will never fail. He will never fail. One more time. I trust in God. I trust in God. My Savior. Trusting God, I trust in God, my Savior. Okay, I'm going to trust you because it's Easter, just to come out of your seat and bless. Oh my goodness, my nephew's here. My goodness, where's, where's Labs? Where's Labs? Oh, bless you. Can we give them a hand? That's my family there. I just want to say, um, Chris, I, I realize why you're here today, because um, you might need an altar call later on after Arsenal lose, but it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Oh my goodness, he's got the shirt on. No, 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 no. Anyway, you can come out of your seat and bless someone. Come on, come on. Come out of your seat. Good to see you, Samantha. Bless you, bless you. Come on, come out of your seat. Bless someone. I'm going to use this one here. Yeah.
lovely to meet you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bless you. Seven. When you go to the one, I trust in God. Then do the seven. Then, not the seven that. Yeah, yeah. and gentlemen, thank you. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's just uh, bow our heads as we're about to break bread. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, right now, your people need to hear from you. They really don't need to hear from me. Therefore, we ask you, please, Holy Spirit, to do the work that only you can do. And everybody said, Amen. Loved ones, please just turn to the person next to you and say to them, I'm not there anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If we can have media team, if we can have the message up, please. Hallelujah. Media team, please, can we have the message up? Thank you. If we could turn our Bibles, please, to Luke 24. Luke 24, verses 1 to 6. Luke 24, verses 1 to 6. And just to say, if, if there's no seats, Usher, just put them in mind. This, mine's not a special seat. Hasn't got any special anointing on, so um, I've got no problem with that at all. You know, there used to be some churches that have the bishop seat. Uh, there's no bishop seat in here, uh, so... Luke 24, loved ones, uh, we're going to be reading from verse 1 to 6, and I um, want to give a big thanks to the media team. If you could just give a big thanks for you, and then, Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek? the living among the dead. Say this to me, loved ones. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you, musicians. I've realized that my life 
appears to be made up of chapters. I'm not a particular um, love of reading books, believe it or not. I, I like to study books. Um, and what I will tend to do is pick out a chapter. I pick out a chapter that I feel is relevant for me, that is pertinent to what I want to think about or to study. When you look at your own life, you'll realize that this is similar. There seems to be divisions of your life in the same way you have divisions of a book. In other words, chapters are about themes. And I'm sure there are some chapters that you wish didn't exist. But I realize that a lot of things in your life, it's not about what you choose, it's about how you respond to them. It's like being around people. I say to people through therapy, don't try and control people around you, but control your response. I'm always mindful of this one word. When someone says, you made me. <laughs> because I think that's far too much authority to give anyone other than God. <laughs> and not even God. <laughs> it has to be severe where God, according to Psalms 23, makes you lie down. Because sometimes we don't rest. So, I want you to begin to think about Eastern, think about the text, but understand that every single chapter of your life has made you the person you are today. I was speaking to someone yesterday at a conference, and they were sharing so openly about childhood trauma. And they were saying to me, Noel, even now, they are still processing that chapter. And I said to the person, the problem is, is that without that chapter, would you be where you are today? <laughs> Would you be around the people that you have today if it wasn't for that chapter in your life? Because you see, what we consider to be a crisis is simply God telling you, I was prepared. God is not reactional. You know, we've got this funny thing in our home, and I just want to confess it before God and men, that when, when, when things break, all my kids, even my wife, they all think, my goodness, I know how daddy's going to feel, because I'm the fixer in the home. So I know when something breaks, if they break a tap, if they break the shower, if they break something, it's going to be fixed. So whenever something breaks, they automatically look for my reaction. But I was thinking the other day, the best way for me not to be stressed is to expect something to break. <laughs> and I was thinking, and I'm, please forgive me, I am a Marvel fan, but I was thinking, what if I had that superpower that I could sense when something was gonna happen before it happened? But I'm a man of God, but I'm not God. God knows exactly what is going to happen before it manifests. This is why God doesn't create provision for you when the need arises. 
He actually sends provision before the need. So therefore in our lives when we face these chapters, what we've got to recognize is that God's got it. Turn to someone and say, God's got it. Come on, just turn to someone and say, he's got it. You may not see it, but he's got it. In Latin, the, the Latin word for chapters literally means a little heading. It's, it's not the main thing about my life but it's a little heading. It gives you some indication of where I'm going, which is why that when we find ourselves in a mess, please don't make it the title. It is just a little heading. Oh, I feel him. Please. Don't write off your family, write off your destiny, write off your purpose. It's just a little heading. But it is not where you are. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, you know this together. Let's say this together. To everything there is an a Everything. Everything in Greek and Hebrew means everything. <laughs> To everything there is a season and there's a time for every purpose under heaven. So what does this have to do with us and how can we correlate this to Jesus? Well, I put there, there are three major chapters, but I'm going to give you five. I believe that there were at least five major chapters in Jesus' life. I want to give you first one, from heaven to earth. Second chapter, from earth to the cross. Third chapter, from the cross to the grave. Fourth chapter, from the grave to earth. And from the fifth chapter, from the earth back to heaven. And what's interesting is that that fifth chapter is going to be repeated. Because <laughs> he's going to come again from heaven back to earth. And sometimes we curse a chapter when it's been repeated. Have you ever had a chapter be repeated in your life? Please listen very carefully. Why do you reread a chapter? Why, why do you watch the same film again? Because by re-watching or by rereading, you realize there's something. So sometimes we are praying and saying, God, break me out of this cycle. I need deliverance. There's a cycle, Bishop, break it in the name of Jesus. And sometimes Jesus is saying, I'm the one that's causing you to revisit that chapter because there's something that you missed the first time. Mm. Do you know, the beginnings are never easy. Jesus' first chapter was fraught with danger, people trying to kill him. Look at Luke 2, 13. It says, now when they are departed, these are his parents. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise, take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word for Herod will seek to kill the young child or to destroy him. Have you ever had a chapter where it seems like the devil is trying to destroy you? Any, anybody out there, is it just, okay, let's be honest. Have you ever had a chapter? <laughs> and I'm not talking, now let me just say this. Some of these chapters you don't want to testify about. You know, I love the way we testify about how God's blessed us with a job and how God's opened doors. But I love to hear those testimonies where you're still in the mess. And here we see Jesus' first opening chapter. People are trying to kill him. Herod hates him. Herod is jealous of him. His life is risk. The new parents, imagine just being parents and you're having to run with your child in order to preserve the child. This was awful. 
but it's a chapter. And in the midst of these kind of chapters, God always has a way of escape. Now, sometimes the problem is, is that in, in our own rationale, we think, surely God wouldn't use this to help me through this chapter. But what is interesting is that God says, go to the place where your ancestors were oppressed. And, but go to that place, and when you go to that place, it's going to be that place that saves your life. Sometimes God doesn't make sense, but just because he doesn't make sense doesn't mean he's not right. How many of you are parents or aunties or uncles? When you say, to, you know, when my children used to say, I want to go Disneyland. Now, I'm saying, no, we can go tooting. Now, that, or Brighton, let me upgrade you. Now, that don't make sense, but guess what? That is right. <laughs> and I'm still right. I'm just saying that if the parents had said, I'm not going to Egypt, they could have died in the chapter. And God's intention was never for you to sleep or stay in that chapter in your life. There is an ex, I feel this. There is an exit plan. Let me just ask you, please, listen, we're in a church. I want you to know your love. But if you feel right now that you need an exit out of a situation, just stand with me. I'm not going to embarrass you. The camera's not on you. The only camera is on me. You feel like you need an exit plan. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to show you a way out. I know that Pharaoh's on your back. I know that everything appears to be coming against you, but there is an exit plan. Come on, I want you just to pray for our brothers and sisters right now. Come on, begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the way maker. You know how to make a way out. Show them a way out in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, let's praise him for a way out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. Herod is not going to kill you. He's not going to kill you. Try and mess with your mind, your mental health. He's not going to kill you. He tried before. He failed before. He's going to fail again. There is another chapter to your life. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. Chapter 2. Everyone say chapter 2. From Bethlehem to the place you were born to Jerusalem, the cross. Matthew 16, 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples and this is what always challenges me with the text, that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and be raised the third day. Now, this is so difficult. Chapter twos of our life, Elder Michael, are so difficult. You know why? Because God said, you must go through it. Oh, Lord. There's a, there's a difference when you could go through something and you have a choice. But when God says, as a loving father, you must go through you must go to Jerusalem this is why Jesus in his humanity said father hold on a minute if it be possible is if it be possible let this cup pass from me because God, I, I know I want to save mankind, but is there any other way? And sometimes when we're in these chapters, it's not that we're saying we don't love God. We're just saying, God, is there any other way? 
because the cross is humiliating the cross is painful the cross is shameful is there anyone out there who have ever been in a stage of their life and it doesn't matter how much you pray doesn't matter how much you fast God says you've got to walk through the valley of the shadow of that now let's just stop there notice he says walk I want to run through my valley but God says this chapter you're going to have to learn how to walk my God it doesn't matter how much you worship how much you praise how much you pray God says I'm not going to speed it up because I can guarantee you if you trust me that you can walk through this chapter in your life then all things are going to work together for your good if you trust me Walk. Chapter 3 from the cross to the grave. Matthew 19 29 to 30. After this, Jesus, knowing all things that were now accomplished, he knew that the chapter was coming to an end. This is a prophetic word for someone. Your chapter. It's been a tough chapter. But Jesus said, I know that this chapter is almost over. And he said, a thirst. That is not a spiritual connotation. It's a human response to what is going on. And let me just say this. Do you know what makes chapters harder? When we deny being human. We deny being human because we think being spiritual should stop us from being human. And God says, I can take your human because I made you human. And sometimes in church, it's not even about singing a C sharp. It's just about making a shout, a noise. Sometimes people don't understand what is behind your noise. You're not even singing in harmony, but it's a cry to say, Jesus, my chapter is nearly an end, but I'm thirsting. I'm feeling this in my soul. So just for 10 seconds, I want you to shout out from your soul. Don't worry about how it sounds. Don't worry about what people will say. Let me hear the My God, church, I'm telling you, have you ever known grief leave your soul? My God, that's what I love. You know, I, I love our culture because when we grieve, we, we, we shout out. But we become into a place where people say, you know, you shouldn't shout, you shouldn't come out. But we were never designed to carry burdens. That's why 1 Peter 5 verse 7 says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for your soul. Come on, just one more second. Let it come out of your soul. Get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. Stress go, depression go, spirit of heaviness go, garments of praise come. Hallelujah. And as he got near to the end, he says, Father, it is finished. It is finished. I'm not finished, but the chapter, (laughs) it is finished. It has served its purpose. 
Satan, you better get ready to move <laughs> because this chapter is finished. Not because you are in control, but because when God says it is paid in full, there is no longer any debt. Mm. Matthew 19, 40 to 42. Then they took the body of Jesus, bound it in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified. Oh my Lord. There was a garden. The place where you were crucified, there's a garden. The place where you were nailed to the cross, there's a garden. Isn't God smart? <laughs> that everyone else saw the cross, but God prepared the garden. And in the garden, there was a place to keep me safe until the next chapter. <laughs> so in the chapter where you'll be nailed to the cross, God says, don't worry. The world sees you dead, but I've already made provision for the next series. And in the place where there's a cross, there's a garden, and in the garden, there's a tomb. And nobody else has ever been in that tomb, but that tomb is to keep you safe until the next chapter. Aren't you glad that God knows how to keep you? Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God. Be glory, dominion, and power forever. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jews' preparation day for the tomb was nearby. Chapter 4, chapter 4. Now on the first day of the week, a new chapter, very Early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. This is actually where I wanted to get to because Jesus' life is made up of chapters. A chapter has changed, but it appears that those who knew him didn't understand or perceive that his chapter had changed. Now, I want to give you some potential signs that some people who love you, who care for you, may not have recognized your new chapter. <laughs> now, can I just add a little caveat? I wasn't, as Saeed said, I was never a road man. I, I, I'm not, I wasn't a road man. I was on the road. You know, I was on the road. <laughs> but I weren't a road man. And, and every now and then, you know, you go to a funeral, me and Errol, you know, we used to, the same school. And I meet some old school friends, and they're like, ah, bruv, you're anything. Yeah, well. uh, it's like, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, <laughs> absolutely fab, actually. Um, because I'm in a new chapter. And when you step out the loop, you don't know those lingo no more. You just don't know. And sometimes I try and be cool. My, my son says, Dad, people don't say that no more. People don't. Dad, what do you mean? What do you mean? 
I'm saying is that one of the big things is that when people don't discern that there is a new chapter in your life, they keep looking for you in old places. Oh, so, no, well, didn't you hear about the rave last week? Um, as a conference? And sometimes you've got to understand that when chapters change, people are talking to you as if you were still dead. You're not dead. They thought you were alive before, but you've got to explain to them that version of me was dead. Yes, I was raving. Yes, I was all doing these manner of things, but that was dead. And you've got to be very careful that because of the way people communicate with you, that they don't make you think that you were, where, you were there where you were. You've got to understand that the devil is always communicating to you from an old place. That is why he loves to dig up your history. But you've got to remember that I am not there anymore. Come on, turn to someone and say, I'm not there anymore. My God, I'm not there anymore. I'm going, my God, you've got to tell some of those boyfriends and girlfriends, you're, this is an old email. This is an old address. I don't live there anymore. Oh my God, I don't know if you called me honey, but I'm not your honey anymore. I'm not there anymore. That transition, I'm a new creature in Christ. God has done something supernatural in my life. How dare anyone hold you in a place where God has delivered you from? How dare anyone hold you in a place where God says, I've resurrected you from? Don't call me depression. Don't call me depression. I was depressed. Don't call me homeless. Mind up, I feel, stand with me just for a few seconds. I ain't finished yet, stand with me a second. Whatever. My God, can I say something that's going to upset some people online? I don't even like when we call people, oh, so you are a divorcee. What does that mean? If that is the case, you shouldn't call me bishop. You could call me a sinner because that's who I was. So why don't we all just start calling people by things that have happened to us? Why don't we just do that? So your, your sister cuss out. <laughs> yeah, but I did it before Christ. No, 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 no. You called me a divorcee, so your sister cuss out. <laughs> and your brother bad breath. <laughs> no, I, but I was on fasting, no. No, you are calling me this. Church, I'm saying to you, don't let nobody, don't let nobody hold you in a place because you're not there anymore. Come on, say, I'm not there anymore. I'm not there anymore. I'm not there. Sit down just for two minutes. Church, I want to just give you one practical step before we pray. And don't worry about the bad breath. The, 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 the. Let me deliver you from that right now. It's all good. I know one of the things that we do as preachers is that we give a lot of spiritual advice and sometimes we don't apply it practically so the question is it's okay talking about chapters that change but how do you deal with the people <laughs> or the situation around you that hasn't changed I want to give you this when you cannot physically change a situation you've got to realize that the chapter of your mind has changed let that sink in. You see, 
It's possible for me to be resurrected from the grave, but still have a grave mentality. It's possible for me to be delivered from the road, but still have a roadman mentality. And you've got to understand Colossians 3 verse 2. Let's read together. Set your mind on what? And not? Now, this is the difficult one. Whose responsibility is it to set your mind? You. Set. Set. Be militant. And understand that my chapter has changed. I'm no longer there. I now need to have a completely different mindset. The circumstances seem the same. The people seem the same. The nation sees the same. But because I have made that transition, I have turned the chapter, I have turned the page, I now need to think differently. In other words, Ephesians 4 verse 2, 22, let's read together. Now put off concerning what? The former, the former, what does it say? The old man, generic, the old man, which what? Grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, but be renewed, what? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. My mind needs to turn the pages. My mind needs to believe I'm changed. My mind needs to know I'm delivered. My mind needs to know that things are now better than that they were. Your mind. The problem is, is that sometimes God has transitioned us, but my mind is still left behind. Just put your hand on your head. It's all good. Say, in the name of Jesus, help my mind to be renewed so that I know that I know that I'm not there anymore. Glory to God. So in closing, could you just stand with me? When the angels entered into a dialogue with these women and asked, well, where is Jesus? We're looking for his body. We know that the last time we saw Jesus, he was in the tomb. Be careful of people. <laughs> who can only judge you on the last time. The last time. The problem is, that's the last time you saw me. But that's not the last time God saw me. And the angel just says, let me give you some advice. Don't look for the living (laughs) among the dead. He's not here. He's not here anymore. Do you know why, even though, this is the word for you, do you know why, even though the attack against you hasn't changed, why you don't respond the same way? Because you're not there anymore. And it's not because you're soft and you, you think, oh, you just let people just talk to you. It don't mess with me like it used to. I'm not there anymore. <laughs> I want to pray. And I know that sometimes, you know, when we have times like this of prayer, we can unintentionally miss the point. I want to just say to you that on Resurrection Sunday, Jesus' position changed. And he couldn't rely on others around him to discern that his chapter had changed. He says, I'm alive, I'm risen. 
You need to know yourself that you are no longer in the same place where you were. So just for a few seconds, and it's not often, you know, please don't let this go viral and say, Bishop told me to talk to the devil. We don't talk. But I want you to declare. There were times they spoke to spirits in this New Testament. I want you just to declare right now, I'm not there anymore. I'm not there. Wherever you're there is, wherever you're there is, right now, just begin to pray. Wherever you're there is, just begin to pray. It could be a place you felt in your marriage, it could be a place you felt in your relationships, in your health, in your emotional well being. On Resurrection Sunday, I want you just to declare right now, I'm not there anymore. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody begin to worship, begin to praise. Hallelujah. I'm not there anymore. Hallelujah. Those of you online, just begin to open up your hearts right now. Come on, just to begin to decree and declare over your life. You're not there anymore. There's a new chapter. There's a new season. Hallelujah. The stone has been rolled away. Hallelujah. Don't label me anymore. Don't hold me back. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not there. Come on, just a few more seconds. Hallelujah. Church, just one second. If you have your Bibles, please forgive me, Michelle. I know I'm the bishop, but I like to be on time. If you have your Bible, please open your Bible. Don't sit back down, but just get your Bible, open it up, or iPad, whatever the case may be. I want you to turn to Psalm 124. There's something I want us to declare. I want us to declare. I want us to declare. I want us to Psalm 124. I'll give you a few seconds. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you're there, just say amen. Psalms 124, verse 1. Hallelujah. I want us just to read together. Preferably New King James Version, not Amplified. Yes, we'll be here till tomorrow. Psalms 124, verse 1. Let's read. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Now, let's stop. If, can you say your side, yeah? If it had not been that the Lord was on my side, let Noel now say, if it had not been that the Lord was on my side, when men rose up against me, they would have swallowed me alive. Their wrath was kindled against me. Then the waters would have overwhelmed me. The stream would have gone over my soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over my soul. But blessed be the Lord who has not given me as prey to their tooth. My soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare! to declare that the snare is broken today. Come on, someone begin to shout out. The snare is broken. My chapter has changed and I'm no longer there. I'm no longer there. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, someone say I'm no longer there. How a dead person responds to offense. How does a dead person respond? They don't respond. They don't respond. 
they don't respond. Saints, if you would like prayer today, I want to invite you to come. Can we have the, the ministers in place, please? Prayer ministers, if you would like to have prayer to remember who you are in Christ, that we are not there anymore. We're not the person we used to be. To stand in the face of whatever chapter we find ourselves in and remember that we are not the same person we used to be. That you wanna set your mind on the things that are above. Please come. The word says, for the joy that was set before him, he was able to endure, Christ was able to endure the cross. Whatever your chapter is today, know the joy that is set before you. Hallelujah. To those of you online, we are inviting our members to have an altar call. And we're going to be sensitive to this. And we want to extend the opportunity for you online to be prayed for. So if you would like prayer, please email us at pastoralteam at ycfinternational.co.uk. And as we end, there's going to be an opportunity for you online if you'd like to give your life to Christ today. If you want to receive the blessing that comes through giving your life to Christ please say the prayer on the upcoming screen. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. God bless you. And for anyone here, if you want to receive Christ, please come. Please come. Please come.